Hello, my name is Cal Molinay from Richmond, Virginia, and I'm an anarchist. And today, I'm here at, once more again at the Compass at VCU to spread the message of freedom. Uh, I guess I'd like to put out two important dates coming up. This Saturday, we're having a Analyzing Capitalism gathering at the Maplewood Anarchy Garden. That's uh, 7 p.m. potluck uh, discussion and then an after party. We're going to have the fire pit, so if there's anything you want to burn, you know, bring it along. Uh, and also, there's a... Uh, I guess I'm giving a speech at the uh, Liberty on the Rocks in Charlottesville on May 3rd and so I guess I'll put the information of that in the next video but yeah um, be great to see all of you there as well and that's hosted by a good friend of mine uh, Mr. Greenwood and so yeah, hopefully you enjoy uh, the video for today and share subscribe if you could please and with that see you guys at the victory party take good care you have no freedom of economic choice you still have to give your money you still have to give up your property you still have to pay your taxes because if you did have a freedom of economic choice what you do with your own money, with your own property, government wouldn't threaten to send you to another cage. You'd be taking your taxes. Right, sure. if you didn't pay your taxes. Yep. So that's the, the immorality of government. It contradicts our moral traditions to begin with, right? We're against the initiation of force, but that's the only way, the singular way, the government knows how to solve any problems is the threat of and use of violence. Mm -hmm. Versus the plurality, though, of nonviolent solutions that you and I already share. Sure. So, what are your yeah, thoughts on that? I totally agree. And, you know, I've always been a firm believer in, um, you know, the establishment really is who has more guns right yeah. and day to day that's just it gets further proven point right. proven time and time and time again my way I have the guns right so. yeah and that's 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 how it runs that's yep. how they but they can never stop us from you and I just simply oh. talking though oh. but no our way. revolution you could have out a number of out gun out match yeah. out, uh, you know they have the nukes right yeah um, and you can I, I would say you can't even do it politically mm -hmm. uh, you know they've had uh, I mean the fact that you and I well, are there's still, so much behind the scenes there too you can't regulate how are we gonna know <laughs> right yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah so politically that's all not yet. So, so you had uh, this question earlier about uh, businesses or uh, free market or uh, more or less the idea of how much do you think it is acceptable for there to be government intervention in our day-to-day -day lives right. because uh, you know uh, there was a quote that kind of has resonated with me people think anything free market is good and anything government regulation is bad right. and I was just wondering your thoughts on that quote okay uh, well I guess it's, it's good to kind of define these particular terms we don't have a free market today we have absolutely a, right we have a state controlled market mm -hmm. there's nothing free about it. If it's a free market, that means the interactions are free and voluntary, consensual. Uh, so that removed, there's no free market. But what a free market is, it's like our interactions are voluntary, consensual in the same way we discussed. Reduce a plurality of non-violent solutions, interactions are consensual. With government, it's not consensual. I guess there's a lot of people who want government intervention because they feel like they're regulating, they're keeping us safe. Sure. Um, so they provide the altruistic sense of, uh, I guess, the per you know, veneer that they hide behind. Uh, but what that does, like every legislation that they pass forward that's being lobbied by other corporations, interest is just really trying to outcompete their competitors right uh, right so a lobby interest they know corporations can have enough money for this uh, new legislative uh, bill that says you know like you have to do upkeep maintenance uh, you know that upwards to a hundred thousand dollars a big business can, can afford that cost but smaller ones can't so it's so another way to kind of prevent people from entering the market yeah. back and forth by government um, I think the most particular area of concern that most people have though with corporations well with businesses in terms of regulations that corporations that get CEOs that don't have personal liability for their actions right right and that's the back and forth by government because mm -hmm. government itself has no liability for their actions right state prosecutor can hide the evidence they have immunity well elections but right? sure I hear what you're saying uh, so 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 that's all it is a corporation is a piece of paper back and forth by government that allows them to escape personal liability for their actions so without government there's no more uh, elusiveness of liability immunity you, you're sorry you're at the whims of the, of the market now right sure. we're all individually held for our own, our own actions mm -hmm. uh, so we don't have a lot of the problems that exist today uh, in terms of that. We regulate ourselves. I mean, if you go and buy a computer, you compare prices, right? You go to consumer reports. Uh, if you go on eBay, you look at the average, uh, I guess, customer review rating. You know, five stars out of five stars, I'm getting this product, right? Sure. So we, we self-regulate ourselves. So you're more of a fan for uh, equal, equal opportunity as opposed to equal outcome. Yeah, equal opportunity. Uh, licenses and uh, permits discriminate against the poor from competing. It's just it's just hard because you know we have this dichotomy where we have the illusion of the free market today with yeah. you know capitalism that we love to just sling around. Right. But you know we if we demanded more transparency and more regulation, I, I have a feeling that you know some government intervention can be a good thing because you know. It, where we are today, a lot of where we got today is because we didn't have a global economy. We didn't have all this globalization and communication to where all the behind the scenes corporate monopolies and all the super PACs and how they're making all this money behind the scenes off of literally exploiting the masses. You know, that it was possible back then, but you know, 
something Noam Chomsky said. He was like, if nothing, if nothing more, or if nothing else, you know, the, the, the Occupy movement just introduced the idea of the 1%. Much in the same way, we have such a global economy where like, we're aware of the 1%. We're aware of the, you know, income inequality. We're aware of all of this rampant exploitation that was caused directly because of the free market. The freer it is, the more the snakes are gonna be able to come in. The more you're opening up a pit for the wolves to come in and just destroy, destroy, destroy. Because as, as civil as you and I can stand here and have this open forum discussion, there are people out there who exist only to make money off of exploitation of other people. And these are the these are the one percenters. These are the people, the CEOs who make $86 billion. Right. But then they turn around and lay off a quarter of their company because sacrifices needed to be made. Right. Um, okay, so I, I see where a lot of this is. Uh, okay, so one, one big area that hurts the poor the most is that empowers the most people. Um, what government, so this is why I don't really find that government intervention helps anybody at all, is because they have a monopoly on the services you and I want. Okay. They have a monopoly on roads, on courts, on security, on law. They have a monopoly on um, USPS delivering pieces of paper, first class mail. It's illegal and criminal for anyone to compete against that, to deliver pieces of paper. Here in the tax market of Virginia, they also have a monopoly on distilled spirits, right? Alcohol, ABC. They also have a monopoly on currency. Uh, before 1913, before the Federal Reserve was created, there used to be competing currencies. Uh, but the government outlawed competing currencies since you're only allowed to trade with the U.S. dollar, which is why the U.S. dollar has lost, lost uh, over 97% of its value. That hurts the poor the worst. No incentive to save. Every dollar you hide underneath your bed mattress depreciates in value. Uh, so these are government-created uh, agencies that, that, that allow for a lot of this stuff to occur. Um, so I wouldn't say, and of course, when you have this uh, government agency, yes, you have the, the one percentage. They have a lot of people that could bribe them that could use their money to influence their decision making, uh, I guess, lobbying areas of, um, I guess, influence. Uh, so, but if you didn't have government, there's no one to lobby, there's no one to influence, there's no one to bribe. Uh, you, you're, you have to do these voluntarily now. Absolutely. Right? You can't hide behind your, your state shield wall, right? And which is what they do. <laughs> um, so, yeah, but without uh, the government, there's, there's no one to influence anymore, there's no one to corrupt, there's no one to bribe, there's no one, there's no political power to hold anymore to try to will to, to shape the world in, in your own making, I guess, if these corporate interests are. Uh, ought to want to do. Um, well, I will tell you this. It'll give you run for your money. Yeah, Definitely yeah, something yeah. to think about. Robert Reich. Robert Reich. He has a... F Man, I wish I could remember the... <sighs> The United, some, United States of Inequality, something like that. Something along those lines. Oh, Inequality is in there. It's on Netflix if you have a Netflix okay, account. Okay. I don't yeah, know yeah, if yeah, you're yeah. I'm okay sorry, with... If, okay. <laughs> I didn't know if you were comfortable, you know, giving $8 to the man. But I'm just, I'm just fucking with you. I'm just fucking with you, man. No, no, no. If you have Netflix, it's still on there. It's a great, right. great watch. And it definitely challenged a lot of my ideas. You know, I, I, I came from an anarchist background. Uh, yeah. I'm slowly starting to see the good in people. And I'm slowly starting to see that government intervention can be a great tool if used correctly if we demand transparency and we demand you know more regulations for you know a utilitarian but pe sense. people have been demanding for transparency from from government from the sort Obama promised transparency and none of it delivered uh, whistleblower you know and, you know I'll be the first to say and this is another reason why I don't vote because it's a revolving door there's no difference right, yeah. between a Republican <laughs> and a Democrat there is right. no Same difference evil still evil there is right. no difference I, I think I think where we are now, there's there's no saving capitalism. I think capitalism has run itself so far into the ground that it's nothing but just material possessions. I need this. You have a problem. I can sell you a solution. Give What's me wrong your with that. You have a problem. I have a better way to solve that problem. What's wrong with capitalism? What's wrong? What's wrong is when you know young girls have body image issues because they don't have a thigh gap. Or what's well, wrong that's, is that's when bad every parenting. four every four out of five. T you know, TV commercials that comes on is yeah. about a, a prescription drug. Are you kidding me? Yeah. In Europe, a doctor tells you which drug to take, not the other way around. We have such a fucked up commercial society here that that's what's really doing us in. It's as it's much as yeah, it is as much as it the is the system. Distractions. Absolutely, yeah. sure. So I think I think it goes both ways. And again, I, I've grappled with a lot of you know leaning on either side of the extremes, uh, and I'm just finding that you know pretty much in all all discourse in life, compromise is the best way to go. And I really. Think like, <laughs> really think you'd like that film. I can't compromise on, you. you can't <laughs> compromise on values, though, right? Well, values are subjective. Well, no, but you values are subjective. They're, they're all, all values are subjective. Day. 
All values that's, that's are subjective. That's very true. I agree with case that. Case to case. But in the beginning of our conversation, you said you don't use violence to solve your problems, right? <laughs> that you're against the initiation of force, and that's also wrong and immoral to violate force or ideas. I asked so much more if you tell me that the initiation of force was wrong and immoral. But when we define what is government, that government only knows how to solve problems through the initiation of force. So then you take your stance against that, uh, I guess, to, to not compromise your own values then? The position that you take I think you said particularly violent force and ideological force, yes, both of those being taken into account. Uh, no, I think the massive amounts that we spend on defense is ridiculous. So as, a, as a music educator, right. I wish we had a little more in the public schools. Well, well, well. You know, let's... Well, that's no, how, that's no, no, no. See, that's us. a monopoly on the education system. But are you the single most important investment in our future? On, on what? Really? Teach you children not to read, to be illiterate? To teach them to go to these... So you're going to tell, tell the next generation of passionate students... You want to know why the education system... I'll tell you right now. It's because in the 50s, if you were a woman, you had two choices. Nurse, teacher. Now we have so many old bitches still in their position with tenure They're who back, are unmotivated. Right? <laughs> They're bad at what they do. See, and that's I what look, happens. That's I what look happens. around here at BCU. Yeah. I look around the classroom at my peers and I see nothing but an extremely motivated next generation ready to change things. Just like you're sitting out right. here with your little thing, us teachers are ready to get in there and make a fucking change. I'm not saying that teachers are all bad or anything. Like, I'm just saying that the system that they're set up in the environment they're supposed to teach, I think that's kind and of And uh, you know what they teach us here? You know what they teach us here? How to get around the system. Because we know it's all fucked. 90% right? of my job as a music educator isn't in the SOLs. Right. But it's my moral obligation and my ethical obligation yeah, yeah, yeah. to the next generation. Right. And, you know, there are increasingly more and more people with that viewpoint. You know, my, my peers, the people in my class, not not just art and music education, but right. even, you know, the people over there that I don't even see. I'm confident, right. you know, that they're doing great things because, you know, we, we do have such a globalized economy. We have globalized everything and to the point where you can have a YouTube channel and broadcast your ideas forcibly to people. Forcibly. You know, no not, forcibly. It's, it's <laughs> clicking on it, I know. Clicking on it. Right. I'm not first anyone to watch the YouTube show. <laughs> if I could only get the whole world to watch it. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's just now more than ever we do live in a time where it is okay for you to say, you know what, like I, I see the fallacies, I see the problems, and you know, there are plenty of people who are willing to take it into their own hands, much right. like yourself, much like the future teachers, much like the future CEOs. There are plenty of CEOs, even in that, even in the, in the movie you watch, not all CEOs are assholes. I didn't want to believe it at first either, but it's true. Right. And you know, it's it's, it's, it's one of those things where, you know, at the end of the day, uh, yeah, dude, e living on either end of the spectrum is really lonely because you got a whole bunch of nothing yeah. behind you. Yeah, it's a true, lot more true. fun in the middle because you got friends on either side. <laughs> but I want to say, hey, it was great talking to you. I got to go make man. some absolutely, copies. Absolutely. Yeah, next time you're out here, I'd love to love to come by and yeah, yeah, chat yeah, let's, again. Let's, let's do that. Would you like some pamphlets? Shit, yeah, man. <laughs>